Alright, this is Eternal Blade, and welcome to part uh, 13, I think, of the Lantern tutorial. And it's turning out to be much more than a Lantern tutorial, but oh well. So we have soft selection turned on. And let's see here. Let's bring the fall off down quite a bit. There we go. I just want to nudge some of these corners here so that we don't have a perfectly uh, symmetric little thing. I'm trying to make sure I nudge the right ones that we can actually see. There we go. And these ones. Giving it that kind of old looking feel. Alright, there we go. And a displacement modifier. And on top of that, we can put a mesh smooth modifier as well. And let's do a quick render here with the roof on. Um, so, just cap that, and I'll be back in a... Alright, so this is what we have so far. It's looking really good. Uh, that parchment adds a lot. Well, I think I might want to move it over just so we can see this edge here. Um, so, let me delete the roof again so we can easily work around in here. I think there's a way to hide it, but I'm not really sure what it is, so... Select the parchment here, and move it over. Hmm. Maybe if we spin it some. You can turn angle snap off of this. So that doesn't look bad right there. Yeah, that's perfect. And also I said I was going to do a little brush to go with it. I thought that was kind of a cool little detail. So, let's build a cylinder. Um, we can build it right here for now. Okay, and let's bring the radius down to something brush-like. Okay, and then on one end, uh, 18 sides is fine. We don't really need that many height segments. And convert it to an editable poly. And let's actually isolate the selection here. So let's drag this aside. And let's start working on our brush. So. Let's add our mesh smooth modifier right off the bat here. Give it two iterations. So edge, we're going to want to connect it once and bring it here. Now this isn't going to be a perfectly strong connection. I want to have this kind of rounded uh, edge here. So what I'm going to do is uh, connect it again and then slowly taper it down. So have it go from here to there. And then this will give us that kind of brush look, I hope. And lastly, we'll uh, select this loop. Okay, that won't work. Select these lines. Uh, wow. There we go. And chamfer. Okay. And there we go. Now we kind of have like a brush end. And on this side, we may just cheat a little bit. Because like I said, the main point to a scene is showing only what you can actually see. So, we're going to do this. Um, maybe a little closer. Uh, let's bring it down here. Okay. Uh, I think I need to inset this. So, it's like this, inset. Okay. There we go. And material. Apply the wood material. And by the way, in case you're wondering what this is, this is just arc and, architect, or arc and design material. And I just chose uh, where is it? the I think it was glossy varnished wood, and I changed the reflectivity to 0.8 and the glossiness to 0.72. So exit isolation mode, and then go over here, and then with your little thing selected, rotate it, you know, almost 90 degrees, 
and let's see where it is. So this end. So rotate it the other way. We want this end pointing like that. I think. Alright, um, that should be good, move it up, just like it's resting on the paper, okay, and let me actually see if I can, hmm. what's that going to do for us, nothing. Oh, I was trying to get the wood to show, but whatever. So there we go, we now have our paper with our little brush in there. Um, curious, look at all those are on. Alright, so Let's see, that paintbrush looks pretty good. I kind of wanted to have some characters written on this. I think that would bring out the texture a little bit. So what I'm going to do is Google some images and then uh, see if I can combine them on this uh, texture. All right, and this is what we're left with. Um, looking pretty good. I like the paper. I might increase the displacement just a touch to get it kind of more crumply looking. and that. Uh, little writing utensil adds a pretty good bit of fluff, I guess, to the scene. So let's go in here and increase this displacement uh, just a bit. There we go. And then raise this up a bit more so we're on top of it. We don't want really any intersections there. Okay, um, let's see. I guess we can start on the actual lamp part. And this is where the renders will start taking a long time to do. So, should be a fun little thing. Alright, um, let's select three and four. So I have all four sides selected. I'm going to materials. Now the way we do this in V-Ray, so I've come to find out, yeah, let me find it, I had it somewhere, I promise, what is this, here it is, it's a V-Ray two-sided material, so let me just apply these things, apply the selection, so what this does is basically you have one material, which is just an image of parchment with some stuff on it. I'll uh, find a different one later, but I just want to show you. And you set the translucency to gray, so it's pretty much like 50% translucent. Now you can use an alpha map if you want to make sure that some things are never translucent. And that's basically all it is. Now if you're doing it in mental ray, you would just, uh, what's it called? Change the translucency options so that it's or the transparency option actually so you can see through it so now if we do just a quick little render here well not really quick but let's do a region and actually you won't even see anything right now so never mind we won't do that we'll make a light first to give us something to do I wish I could do something but oh it's this okay so let's um, make a light, a V-Ray light, and we'll put it right in the center of our, uh, you can turn auto grid off, right in the center of our thing here, and let's figure out where it is in actual space, it's floating way up here, alright, so put it right in here, get it centered as best as possible, and a little bit lower where a candle would be or whatever was being used to light it. Temperature, 
all that stuff. We'll uh, keep it the same for now. Actually, we'll bump this up to call it 10,000 because it's going to have to show through this and I want some light coming out. And we're going to make it a bit darker. Temperature of about a candle. I think it's around 1700-ish. So now, if we don't go to there, but we go to here, we render region, and we just select um, just this region here. Let's just see what we have when we press render. Let's see what happens. All right, so uh, after an incredibly long time, I eventually came up with this image. This took forever. Like I spent hours on this, but uh, I'll tell you what I did. And you can see we have um, pretty good reflections in the light here. Uh, the the focal point, you know, it's nice. You have the blur in the background, and everything up here is sharp. I did change the texture a bit because the old one was getting a lot of noise. There was noise everywhere. And I wasn't really a big fan of that, so I made a V-Ray texture. I'll show you that, too. Uh, so to begin with, though, let's talk about the render settings, because those were the big thing. It used to take like a couple hours to render this image, but I changed a few things, so let's go over that. So in V-Ray, I changed the image sampler to Adaptive DMC. It was originally an Adaptive Subdivision. Um, that just gives it a different um, algorithm to do the anti-aliasing. I changed this to mid to Mitchell uh, Netravalli, which is again another algorithm, and this is kind of a quicker one usually used for like uh, architectural renderings and whatnot. And I put both the ringing and the blur to zero. This kind of gives it edge enhancement if you raise it up, but it also gives it a little bit of color distortment, and this will blur it, of course. And then for the adaptive DMC, I just upped the sand the subdivisions a bit, and I lowered the threshold. I think it was originally at 0 0.1, maybe. I think I put it to 0 0.01. Off my color mapping, I was just playing around. I don't really know what many of these do, but HSV exponential seemed to be the best. And when I turned on sub-pixel mapping, it, it uh, reduced some of the little noise effects I had in the background. Then in indirect illumination, um, I have ambient occlusion on with the default settings. And my primary bounces are irradiance map and secondary are light cache. Now for my irradiance map right now, I just have it at a very low setting, but uh, you just have to change that to high or even medium if you want to render it out. And then for the light cache, I have 1,000 subdivisions with 0 .01 sample size and 8 passes. Now the number of passes should probably correspond with the number of cores in your computer. So if you're on a dual core, two, quad core, four, and so forth. So that way you get the best um, power to computation ratio, I guess. And I like just checking these so I can see what it's doing initially. Um, over here, I didn't change anything, but if you're noticing that your um, buckets, are, the little squares over here, are taking a long time to render, just reduce this. Uh, mine started at 64, I put it at 32 just so I can get more squares in here. And that just helps it out a bit. And for the textures, let's go over here to materials so I can find it. Here it is. I have quite a mess here, but um, let's see. For my wood material, I used a Vira material, a Vira material, and I put the reflections at a really dark gray. The uh, reflect glossiness at 0.85 with 64 subdivisions. I changed the max depth to 10, so that way I'll have more light bouncing coming through. I left everything else the same, and I used the mental ray arc and design material just drag this varnish wood thing over to the bump and then for the diffuse I use the basic um, bitmap that was come with the architectural and design. My wall material is simply a viewer material with no reflectivity actually sorry it's an arc and design material no. with no reflectivity and just kind of an eggshell color and I also apply the silk texture to the pillow which I literally just googled blue silk put it in the diffuse slot. Um, this is a viewer material. Change the glossiness to 0.44 and the reflection to a very, very dark gray again. And that gave me pretty good results. So now I'm going to go see if I can Photoshop this to get... Um, where is it? I don't know where it is. 
but the actual kind of bloom effect. I'll have to figure out how to do it, but uh, I'll come back with the next part and show you how I did it.